Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today we are definitely behind the scenes. In fact, we are deep behind the scenes, actually behind our farmyard area and actually behind our education building as well. But good morning, everybody. Great to see you this morning. Thanks for tuning in live. We're getting everything all set up. Alexis and William, good morning. Happy Tuesday. I was gonna say it's Turtle Tuesday today because we are going to be meeting some of my all-time favorite residents are Eastern Box Turtles. They are one of my favorites from when I did education programs here at Riverbanks. They are some of our animal ambassadors. So we are gonna be up close and personable with them this morning. In fact, they're hanging out right at my feet right now. So good morning, everybody. I also have to mention, you notice everything is a little backwards, but these are our new masks here at Riverbanks. Riverbanks Zoo and Garden, of course. They've been just issued to all of our different staff members. So you're gonna to start to see all of our friendly, familiar faces with our branded out masks. So I figured I'd wear them this morning for Z Learning. But hello everybody, Anna, Sarah Grace, Zoe, Joshua. Good morning. It is so great to see all of you tuning in live and good morning to River and Meadow too. I'm glad that you were here at the zoo yesterday. You gotta come in person, but you're tuning in virtually today, which is so much fun for us to share. So let's go ahead and get to it. I know yesterday we spent a whole lot of time talking and we kind of saved the animals for the end today. We're gonna jump right into the animals right away. So start sending in those questions all about Eastern box turtles. And let's go ahead and meet them. Like I said, we are behind the scenes here. Let me go ahead and kind of scooch, get a little bit more comfy. I'm actually sitting down with our box turtle friends this morning and they are hanging out right here. Now, the individual that we're looking at right now, his name is Spanky. We have three different box turtles that are joining us. Buckwheat's hanging out over here, getting a good view here quick. Joyce, I am so excited that you're excited for turtles because I sure am too. And Spanky's right over here again. And then last but certainly not least, if you kind of see way over there in the corner, there's Samantha. She's kind of digging down. She decided to start burrowing again. Now, Faith, you asked such a great question right off the bat here. Let me go ahead and get settled so that way you can see Samantha a bit better. How do box turtles get their name? Well, box turtles actually have a really unique ability as a turtle, not only can they pull their heads into their shell and their feet into their shell, but they actually can close that shell kind of like a box, you could say. They have a very kind of odd hinge, let's call it, on the bottom part of their shell, kind of on what we would consider like their bellies, let's say. But underneath on that plastron, they actually have a hinge that allows them to close it shut like a box, which is how they get their name. Now, Joyce, you were wondering about Spanky. Spanky does look a little bit different, and we're going to talk a bit more about Spanky a little bit later. But before we do so, let's go ahead and zoom back here. It's breakfast time. So we have breakfast is served for all three of these box turtles. Our animal ambassador keepers went ahead and prepped this. So shout out to Caitlin. Thanks so much for getting this all set and ready for us this morning. We have a mix of carrots and apples and lettuce. And you also might notice too, there's a bit of some wet food too that's made for omnivores, just like box turtles, since not only do they eat plants and veggies, but they also are opportunistically eating omnivorous diets, which means they could eat things like worms, carrion too. In fact, this little dish right here is actually specifically for Spanky. So let's go ahead and kind of settle it on down in. This is Spanky right here. We're gonna get a real nice close look at him. Take a look at those eyes. What a sweetie. <laughs> now, Spanky has a very important message and story to share with all of us, but I wanna get his food all settled first. That way he can go ahead and start eating while we get <laughs> breakfast served for everybody else as well. But take a look at those red eyes. You see those beautiful yellow markings too. That is what box turtles are definitely famous for, those unique colorations. Here, let's go ahead and get the rest of breakfast served. So that way there's good sharing that's going on. So that way everyone's getting plenty of breakfast. But those of you who are wondering what's kind of the average lifespan for a box turtle, let's go ahead and get buckwheat out here just for a second. Make sure that there we go, that she knows that it's, it's breakfast time too. 
but our box turtles right here at Riverbanks range anywhere from about 25 years old to 30 years old. And this is a pretty long time. I mean, they are some older individuals. They've been here for a good chunk of time of their lives here at, as animal ambassadors. But box turtles actually have been known to live over a hundred years old. Holy smokes. Who just mentioned that? Anna, you're right. We did get a donation. We got a $25 donation. We had our first one for the day. Thank you, whoever donated. I'm trying to scroll through past all these. Oh, it's Daniel. Daniel, thanks so much for donating. There's so many different questions that were coming through. I almost missed it. Thank you so much for supporting Riverbanks. But box turtles just like these are actually very long lived individuals. So Right now, all three of our individuals are pretty average age. Ooh, Buckwheat doesn't seem like she's really into <laughs> breakfast this morning. She's gonna go off and do whatever she wants instead. But Eastern box turtles are actually native right here to the United States. In fact, I've been noticing a couple of different comments come through. Y'all have been finding them in your backyards. We share habitat with them. In fact, there's quite a different variety of box turtles all around the United States. But here in South Carolina, we have the Eastern box turtles which is just like these individuals we're looking at here. But Buckwheat seems to be ignoring this beautiful breakfast. Let's go ahead and turn Buckwheat around and maybe somebody might want to dig on into that lettuce, carrots. They kind of have a sprinkling of different vitamins and minerals too. Oh, maybe, oh, somebody might be a little bit more interested. We might have to let Samantha know that she's missing out on breakfast here as well. Keep these great questions coming. Oh, Sarah wants to know, where are the box turtles located in the zoo? Well, these three individuals actually live entirely behind the scenes. They're our animal ambassadors, which means that they are active members of education programs or guest engagement activities too. So you might see them for an encounter, but we also have a box turtle that actually has a habitat right inside. Oh, I switched my camera on, excuse me. <laughs> right inside of our farmyard area. So those are a couple of different places that you can see box turtles. But like I said, these three live exclusively behind the scenes. Uh, Alexis and William, you were wondering if they are endangered. No, they're not classified as endangered, but Eastern box turtles and box turtles in general actually are listed as vulnerable. So they definitely are at risk of extinction. And a main reason for that is habitat loss, but it's also for the illegal trade in box turtles too. In fact, I want to encourage all of you, check out our caption today because it has some really interesting facts about their lifestyle and also how you can help them in the wild. I know we share habitat with them <laughs> as, <laughs> as Buckwheat starts to walk away, but we actually share space with them, which means a lot of times people are tempted to collect them, try to keep them as pets. And I'm here to tell you to leave those box turtles out in the wild. Say hi to them have an up close encounter, but make sure to give them personal space in their own habitat and make sure that they stay wild. In fact, if you check out our caption, box turtles are very unique in the sense that they have a very limited home range. In fact, their entire lives are usually spent in an area about the size of a quarter of an acre. It's really not that big. In fact, it's probably about 750 feet in diameter, you could say, if that gives you a little bit better idea size. So moving them from their home is very detrimental to them. They want to be in those home ranges. They know the lay of the land. They know where to find food in those areas and how to thrive. So leaving them where they are is so much more important. In fact, Spanky here is all about sharing this story because Spanky has a pretty unfortunate story. Thankfully though, it does have a happy ending because Spanky here was actually collected by somebody who then decided to keep him as a pet and they did not take very good care of him at all. They fed him the wrong diet. They didn't give him the proper habitat. He's not nearly getting the care that he's getting here at Riverbanks. And you can tell, take a look at his shell. You see that it has all these weird patterns to it. It looks kind of deformed. His legs really stick out far out of his body. His shell is only a portion of the size that it should be. Now, Spanky here, thank goodness, was then rescued and provided a permanent home here at Riverbanks. But he is such a great example of leaving animals out in the wild. That's where they're going to thrive. Because unfortunately, after he was kept as a pet for that period of time, 
there was no way to return him to his home range because if a turtle gets relocated, they can spend years trying to find where they were originally meant to be. Now, I know we've been talking about Spanky. Let's go ahead. Samantha's hanging out right over here. Since she is one of our animal ambassadors, I can go ahead and kind of scoop her up real quick. I want to just have them sit side by side for a quick second. Look at the huge difference between Spanky and Samantha. It is a massive size difference. We're going to send Samantha over there so that way she can start to maybe go eat some breakfast herself. <laughs> that way Spanky can worry about his own dish. But unfortunately, Spanky really will never have that same looking shell that Samantha does and that buckwheat does like a normal box turtle. But thankfully here at Riverbanks, Spanky is a great ambassador for that message. I'm so glad that he's able to share that with all of you. He does look like a little baby, but that's just because his growth is so severely stunted from not getting the care that he needed. But thankfully here at the zoo, you can tell that they're getting great diets, of course. And of course they're provided our top quality care, especially as animal ambassadors. But my message here today is if you see a box turtle in your yard, appreciate them, welcome them as a neighbor, maybe even take a quick picture of them, but then let them do their thing. Let them go about their business because they're truly just trying to thrive and survive out in the wild, just like any other animal is. So instead of scooping them up and trying to turn them into an easy pet, don't do it. They are so much healthier out in the wild where they naturally should be. And that also goes for any time that you might see a turtle crossing the road. How many of you out there actually have seen a turtle cross the road before? Maybe on a busy highway, maybe on a neighborhood road you've seen it. Now, all too often, people like to help save those individuals, which is so admirable. It's a great way to be a wildlife hero. But here's the deal. This is the right way to do it. Whatever direction they are going, move them across the road in that direction and then just simply leave them on the other side of the road. Turtles know what they're doing. They have great internal GPS, as you could say, and they aren't lost, I promise. And by just having them cross the other side of the road, they'll make sure to be heading in the right area and staying within their home territory too. So that way you're not completely relocating. Don't bring them home into your own backyard. Leave them where they are. Just make sure to turn them around so that way they're heading in that right direction. Jessica, I'm so glad that you've seen that before and you've helped to be a wildlife hero. Alexis and William, y'all have too. Sherry, that is a great question. So our individuals have lived here for a very long time. In fact, they were hatched in human care. So these individuals actually haven't really had a home range of sorts. These two, at least. Um, Spanky has been in human care for such a long period of time that he is thriving in this area just as far as where our food is provided it's warm for them of course they have this outdoor area on warm days to go ahead and explore around but y'all keep these great questions coming uh. oh and i love to hear that your mama saved so many turtles that is amazing I love to hear about all of you wildlife heroes out there helping all of those native backyard friends. Now, those of you who are just tuning in, we're taking a look at Samantha here, one of our Eastern box turtles who is making herself at home at this <laughs> breakfast table this morning. All of this food, according to her, is just hers. And she is chewing and munching on lettuce, carrots, some wet food as well, and then even a little bit of apples too. But she is doing a great job snacking away here behind the scenes here at Riverbanks. But you can take a look at that beautiful shell pattern. In fact, I won't interrupt her breakfast here quite yet this morning. But I do want to go ahead and take a quick little peek over here at buckwheat. Let's go ahead and we'll let Samantha continue eating. But I do want to show you all. I remember here, we'll just go ahead and briefly get a quick look, but do you see that line across the bottom of buckwheat shell? I just wanted to give you a quick look, of course, and then set buckwheat back down. But if you notice that line across the middle, that is kind of that hinge in their shell that allows them to close up and actually earn their name box turtle. 
who A. coli was wondering, do they enjoy being handled as much as, say, the Galapagos tortoises that love to be scratched? Great question. Now, our box turtles have actually been here longer than I've been here at Riverbanks. They are professional animal ambassadors. They do a wonderful job and they are very familiar with being handled. Here, take a look. <laughs> Spanky is heading all around, seeing what Buckwheat is up to. But today we are outside behind the scenes with our sometimes familiar faces. Some of you who might have been taking education programs or seeing our encounters out in the park, even though they might be on temporary pause, y'all still can connect with these amazing residents like Spanky here that we're looking at right now but they absolutely are familiar and very comfortable with being handled and meeting all sorts of different guests here at Riverbanks. Take a look at Samantha. What a beautiful turtle. Oh, y'all are getting such a great view. This is a safe animal, of course, for me to spend time with and get on inside and get you a really nice close look here at some of our animal residents. Now, box turtles are completely native right here to South Carolina. They are considered vulnerable, but they are a pretty easy sight as far as something that you might find in your backyard and your garden spaces. I know speaking of gardens, tomorrow we're going to be up in the garden celebrating our 25th anniversary up there since the garden opened back in 1995. And our garden actually has quite a handful of different box turtles that live in those garden spaces. So we definitely have these individuals that hang around with us. We're kind of following Samantha over here this morning, seeing where she's heading. Keep those questions coming, everybody. If I don't catch your questions while we are live, don't worry, we'll be jumping on them later, hopefully answering them later in the day. Those of you who are talking about picking up snapping turtles, that is such a great message when and if you are moving turtles, wild turtles that are trying to cross the road, only do so if it's safe. Make sure there's no traffic. It's not a dangerous situation for you to be in. And be mindful that yes, turtles and tortoises can bite. In fact, when they're scared and threatened, that's definitely a defense mechanism, especially if you're a snapping turtle. So I don't recommend moving a snapping turtle unless maybe traffic is slowed, stopped, or not even present and you can help to coax that individual across the way without having to pick them up. But of course, anytime that you move a turtle across the road, make sure they're going in the direction they were heading anyway. And then of course, wash your hands afterwards. Y'all are sending in such great comments. Andrew was wondering, in the wild, do they live in groups or do they prefer to live alone? Well, they definitely usually have much more of a solitary lifestyle. They kind of have their own home range. That way they don't have to share resources and food. But as you can tell here, they don't mind hanging around other turtles, especially if there's plenty of food to eat. Ooh, Anna, age 10, you're wondering, do they eat bugs? Well, today breakfast did not include bugs, but yes, they absolutely do. In fact, one of their all time favorite snacks are big, huge earthworms. That's one of their favorites that they love to dine on. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. <laughs> all right, everybody, we're gonna get one last view here of some of our box turtles. We'll say goodbye to all three of our individuals. This is Samantha. She's gonna tuck down for a quick nap. Let's head on over here. You're gonna go on an adventure with me. Here's Spanky. And remember, we learned about Spanky's message of leaving wild animals out in the wild so that way they can thrive. And that's why Spanky has that unique look about him. He has that deformed shell. He did not get the care that he needed, but thankfully now he is pampered here at Riverbanks. So that way he is able to thrive once again. And then last but not least is Buckwheat. We gotta say goodbye to all three of our different individuals. <laughs> Those of you who are still sending in questions, keep them coming. We're gonna have this video up on Facebook, but then we'll also have it up on YouTube as well. If you wanna share with any other family members who might not be on Facebook, I encourage you to do so. But I hope that you join us live tomorrow morning from the garden for our 25th anniversary there. Thank you all so much for joining us here this morning. We cannot say thank you enough. 
but I want to encourage you to tune in live tomorrow morning for a botanical garden feature. And then later in the week, we got a whole bunch of surprises. I'm thinking Thursday, we might head over and see some of our black and white striped residents. And then Friday, we have a first birthday to celebrate in one of our coldest habitats in the zoo. Those are all the clues I'm gonna give you right now though. So tune in for more Z learning later this week at 10 a.m. Thanks so much everybody and we'll see y'all again soon.